calculating a hash code uh, on a computer is governed by an algorithm. As we've said before, an algorithm is a, is a recipe. It is a list of instructions for manipulating data um, mathematically and in other ways. And in this case, there are many different kinds of algorithms that can be used to calculate a hash code. Here are some of them. Uh, one algorithm that can be used to calculate a hash code is called CRC. That stands for Cyclical Redundancy Check. This is a, a relatively weak fingerprint. It's not used, it's not strong enough uh, to validate that two files are unique. And so it's used for less uh, important things than validating passwords uh, and checking that um, photographs haven't been digitally altered. Uh, a stronger fingerprint is called MD5. Um, and a stronger fingerprint still is called SHA. 256. These each three are have a description of the algorithm that you execute in order to calculate uh, the fingerprint of a digital object. Um, right now, um, this is kind of the, the one that's most uh, prominently used in the Bitcoin uh, ecosystem. It's used uh, very heavily other places as well. So these are each algorithms. And people can write programs that implement this algorithm and that run on different operating systems and in different environments. So what are some important properties that a hash code has to have? What are some important properties that one of these algorithms have to have in order for it to make a good hash code, in order for it to be a good hash code? Well, for starters, we should understand that what the algorithm is, is it's a function. It's a hash function. So we'll write that as uh, a function symbol. Uh, we'll go ahead and put an H there for hash. And whatever we're going to put in here is going to be our message. It's going to be our digital data. And so we're, we're going to calculate some function of an email message or of a photo or of a file. And the output is going to be our hash code, the hash of our, our message. This function could be the CRC function. It could be the MD5 function. It could be the SHA-256 function. All of those will produce different fingerprints. But if you give it the same digital object, again, each one of these will produce the same fingerprint uh, that they produced last time. Um, sometimes these ha go by different names. So these go by names, uh, the one that I'm using, which is hash code. Uh, sometimes uh, they go by um, the name hash value. Uh, sometimes it's simply called uh, a hash. And then this thing here is called the hash function. Hash function takes the digital object and turns it into a fingerprint. All right, so one of the things that the hash function has to do is it has to produce different fingerprints with different inputs. So it has to be the case that uh, FH of message 1 shouldn't equal the hash value of message 2 if M1 is not the same as M2. So that's one of the properties that you like to have of a hash function, that the fingerprints are different for different things. That's pretty straightforward. Another really important thing that you want is you want this hash function to be something that we call a one-way function. And what we mean by that is that we want it to be we want it to be easy to calculate this fingerprint, but we want it to be very hard to just take this fingerprint and understand what the message is that that created it. You can understand why this would be important if you were using this in a password system. When you use it in a password system, you would take the hash function of your password to produce a fingerprint. And it would be really bad if you could take that fingerprint and calculate somehow what the original password was in the beginning. 
So you want this to be a function that's very easy to go this way and very hard to go that way. So those are the properties that those are the key properties that you want of hash functions. I, I guess you could also say you want it to be um, uh, you know you want it to be fast uh, and easy to go this way, and you want it to be slow and hard to go back the other way. All right, those are the key properties. All right, great. Now we know that the fingerprint is a summary of the digital object. So we can take a fingerprint of a database file, and we can take a fingerprint of another database file, and it's not the whole database. It's just a summary of the database. And so if you get into the details of hash functions, you might want to ask, well, how many different possible fingerprints are there? Well, in the SHA-256 algorithm, there are two to the 256 different fingerprints that you could possibly have. And so that so it's very, very, very unlikely. In fact, basically it's impossible for two objects that are different to give you the same fingerprint on accident. I mean, just for reference, there's something like 2 to the 260 atoms in the universe. However, it, it could be possible that if it was a bad hash function, you could figure out a way to create a very specific fingerprint um, that matches something else that you're trying to, to trick. So for example, if you knew that one password gave you one uh, hash function, uh, gave you one fingerprint, one password gave you a fingerprint, it may be very slow and hard to recalculate what the initial password is. But if there was some way that you could figure out a second password that had the same fingerprint, so basically breaking this property of the hash functions, if you could figure out a second thing that was equal, well then uh, that would be bad for using the hash function for any kind of a security system. And in fact, the MD5 function uh, has been, uh, people have figured out a way in order to do just that with the MD5 function. So the MD5 function isn't used very often anymore for secure um, integrity checking of different, um, different digital objects. Okay, so this is the basic idea with hash functions. What we need to know is that a hash function takes a digital object passes it through an algorithm and produces the hash, which is like a fingerprint. What I'm going to do uh, for the last section of this lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to a screen capture. And I'm just going to walk you through an online tool that enables you to, um, to calculate fingerprints of data so that you can explore a little bit how those properties that we talked about that hash functions have to have, how they operate. Um, so great, we'll cut to that right now. Great, so now we're online doing a screen capture. And what I just want to show you is how this fingerprint actually gets calculated uh, when you're running it in a computer system, for example. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how it might be done from a command line if you were going to use a command line interface to capture um, a fingerprint. So here, let's switch to the terminal. And uh, this is a little bit arcane, but if you, are, if you execute a function and you want to take a fingerprint of, for example, my name, uh, you might do it with code that looks like this. You pass it to the program that runs the SHA-256 algorithm and the result is a fingerprint there. So this sequence of letters and numbers, this is represented in hexadecimal, is the equivalent of 256 bits of information 
And that is the fingerprint of the data represented here by Donald Patterson. Now, in fact, Donald Patterson's a relatively small amount of data. But what I can also do is I can take uh, a digital figure, fingerprint of a much larger um, file and create a fingerprint that is uh, the same length as that one, but captures the uniqueness of much more data. So let me do that now. All right, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to run the same algorithm, but instead of running it on that little bit on, the, on my name there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it on a file that I happen to have uh, of a video file that I recorded. And this video file is about 100 megabytes, 120 megabytes long, I think. And so when we run the fingerprinting algorithm on it, you can see it takes a, a few seconds, but not a whole lot of time, and it produces a 256-bit fingerprint uh, of that file. And so I know that if that file changes at all, uh, then it will have a new fingerprint. So let's look at a web-based tool that can calculate the same fingerprints uh, that you can use to kind of explore some of these effects. All right, hang on a sec. Okay, this is a website that has a hash calculator on it. I'm going to resize the window so you can see the work that we just did a second ago. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to put in some data. We'll put in my name again, and then we'll come down here. We'll calculate the 256 hash or the fingerprint. And you can see that the hash function that's calculated here, E41CC2355 and all the letters in between, letters and numbers in between, matches the fingerprint of the same data that I calculated here, E411CC all the way down to 32355. So if this was my password, say my password uh, was something strange like uh, bicycle, bicycle frog toast, I could calculate that hash function and I could store that hash function on my computer rather than storing the password. And so when someone presented a password to me, I could, I could uh, calculate the hash, hash function of it and see if the hash functions match uh, rather than seeing if the password itself matches. And that keeps my password, my original password, secure uh, because the ability to go backward from that fingerprint that you see there, the ability, I mean, you can kind of guess it intuitively, although mathematically it's much, uh, a much stronger argument. You can see intuitively that it's very hard to go from this function that starts with, or this signature that starts with 175 and recover uh, the password bicycle frog toast. Another thing that you can see is that if you change something even slightly, so let's change the last letter of frog toast to have a capital T. When we recalculate the sum, remember that this sum starts 175 and ends 970. If we calculate this, the hash of that, well now it's completely different. It, it starts with completely different um, characters and it ends with completely different characters. So it's very radically different than the same fingerprint of a very similar password. And that, 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 ran, that apparent um, randomness of mapping from your digital object to the fingerprint helps to make it difficult to move backwards from the fingerprint to the digital object. Okay? Um, so that's what I wanted to show you. We'll leave the link to how to access this online, but of course you can just grab the link uh, from the screenshot up here if you're interested in trying it out. And there are other ones online that you can um, uh, work with as well. Thank you.